For example, 3, a right pyramid has a height of 20 and a hexagonal base with sides measuring 10 centimeters. Make a sketch of the base and determine its area as an exact value and to the nearest centimeter squared. Well, if I have a hexagonal base where all the sides here are going to be 10 centimeters, then if I split it up by the diagonals then what I find is I can turn this into six identical triangles and conveniently enough they're all equilateral triangles where all three sides are going to be 10 centimeters which means that if I take just one of these triangles and I split it in half then I know that I'm gonna have my height this was an entire side of 10 which means that this would be 5 and this would be 5 and this side is still going to be 10 so I can use my Pythag to solve for what my height would be. The height squared is going to equal 10 squared minus 5 squared, or the height squared is going to equal 75. The height is going to equal the square root of 75. which means that this base is going to be six identical triangles that are one half of the base ten times the height of the square root of 75. We can even simplify that height of square root of 75 using our radicals rule and say that that would actually be 5 root 3. Because we're going to want to simplify this as much as possible. So I can take 6 times 1 half which is going to be 3 times 10 which is 30 times 5 which is 150 root 3 centimeters squared or I can approximate it to the nearest centimeter squared as being approximately 260 centimeters squared. If the pyramid is filled with water, what is the volume of the water to the nearest milliliter? Well, now I'm going to solve for the volume. The volume is equal to the area of the base times the height times because it's a pyramid one-third so I'm going to say that's going to be one-third times 260 times the height of 20 and this is going to give me one seven three two centimeters squared 
or sorry, centimeters cubed, but remember that centimeters cubed are the same as milliliters. For example four, two cones have radii of equal length. The first cone has a height of five centimeters and a volume of 10 centimeters cubed. State the volume of the second cone if its height is 10, 20 centimeters. For problem two, they have the same height. The first cone has a radius of five centimeters and a volume of 10 centimeters cubed. What is the volume of the second cone if its radius is 20 centimeters? So, for the first problem, how can I approach it? Well, if the volume, is equal to one-third pi r squared h. Then I can say that the volume of cone 1 is going to be one-third pi r squared times 5. The volume of cone 2 is going to be 1 third pi r squared times 20. If I solve for these things, what the ratio is between these. If I said that I had one third pi r squared times 20 divided by one third pi r squared times 5, I'm going to remove the common factors. Take out one third on the top and the bottom, pi on the top and the bottom, r squared on the top and the bottom. Literally, I'm just left with, for the volume, 20 over 5, and I get 4, which means the volume of the second cone is 4 times that of the first because the height is four times the size. If we apply the same principle for the second one. Then I'm going to say that the volume of cone 1 is going to be equal to 1 third times pi times 5 squared times h. The volume of cone 2 is going to be 1 third pi times 20 squared times h. I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to divide the new cone from the old cone for the volumes. So I'm going to say that if I have 1 third pi times 20 squared, times h divided by 1 third pi times 5 squared times h, I can start canceling out again. And I'm just going to wind up with 
20 squared, which is 400, over 5 squared, which is 25, or get 16. The volume of the second cone is 16 times the size of the first.